Making sure that police get discipline internally when they violate department policy and face criminal charges if they break the law is fighting an uphill battle. But even when cops are held accountable, there's that one thing that very rarely ever gets taken away, and that's their pensions. Take, for instance, Derek Chauvin. Even as he sits in prison convicted of murdering George Floyd, CNN reports that the former Minneapolis police officer is still eligible to receive more than $1 million in pension benefits. And Chauvin is far from alone. That CNN investigation reveals hundreds of former officers convicted of felonies or fired for violating police disciplinary codes all across the country are getting their pensions or slated to get them in the future. Policies and laws on whether an officer gets to keep their pension in these circumstances vary across jurisdictions. Joining me now to talk more about that investigation is Melanie Hickens, Hicken, I'm sorry, uh, a, an investigative, senior investigative writer for CNN. Melanie, welcome to the show. Hi there, thank you so much for having me. Of course, thanks for doing this, this investigation and this reporting, it's, it's amazing. It's actually really fascinating. But for those who don't know about the specifics, can you tell us about how most pension plans work for law enforcement officers and why they're so valuable? Yes, yeah, so um, pensions are something that most Americans, I think, would dream of getting these days. It's really uh, a benefit that private, the private workforce saw disappear uh, a number of years ago. But in the public sector, um, pensions remain a common uh, benefit given to um, public employees, especially public safety employees, such as police officers and firefighters. And um, basically it guarantees them a certain amount of their pay for life um, throughout retirement. So unlike a 401k, where uh, if that money runs out, um, you're kind of on your own, a pension guarantees you a certain set amount of money every year um, until you pass away. Well, when we mentioned the, um, we mentioned the Chauvin case, tell us what you know about his eligibility for, for a pension. Yeah, so it was Derek Chauvin that actually sparked this whole investigation. Um, I had been a local city government reporter uh, in a suburb of Los Angeles about a decade ago and had covered the pension crisis, the funding crisis that has affected cities. And so um, when the news broke of the tragic death of George Floyd last summer and Derek Chauvin did end up being charged, my um, colleague Blake Ellis and I were really curious um, because this was so rare. Here you had a cop who not only was he fired and disciplined, but he was actually charged with murder, which as um, I'm sure you know, is extremely rare. So we mm -hmm. were very curious whether in this case that would mean he would lose his pension. And so um, we reached out to the uh, state fund in Minnesota and they explained to us at the time, um, and this is still true today, that there was no law in the books um, dictating any sort of forfeiture of pension benefits. So as a result, he remained eligible for um, all of his years of service. He had been a police officer for a number of years. And as a result, uh, he's eligible for a pension that um, could add up to more than a million dollars uh, if he lives to the age of 85, which is you know pretty standard. So uh, it's a lot yeah. of money and it's uh, a lot of that um, could be collected from prison. Uh, it, Social Security, on the other hand, um, is cut off to prisoners. Well, let's talk about uh, disability pensions, uh, which are different from retirement pensions. In some cases where police have been fired from the force and have not been eligible for a retirement pension, they've been able to negotiate a claim of disability. Um, in a couple of cases, uh, for example, the killing of Daniel Shaver, the police officer was tried for murder and then acquitted, and he was able to argue that he suffered PTSD from the killing and the trial and therefore qualified for a pension? Yeah, so disability pensions um, are something that I covered a lot as a city hall reporter. So they, you don't have to be retirement age. Retirement age is already quite young um, for police officers. It tends to be some cops can get their retirement pension as young as in their uh, 40s or 50s. Uh, 55 is a pretty standard age for a full police pension. But yes, you're correct that um, disability pensions, which can be triggered by things such as PTSD, uh, can be uh, given even younger than those ages so they can last for a very long time. 
We did not specifically look at disability pensions in our um, analysis. I believe all the officers we found were receiving or eligible for retirement pensions. But yes, I'm sure, um, honestly, if you looked at the number of disability pensions, that would probably just add to our total. Now, we know that uh, police unions are, are extremely powerful. Talk about their role in police officers being able to negotiate such favorable pensions. So police unions um, have long been uh, the negotiating party at the table for these pension benefits. Um, as you've seen, cities struggle to afford pensions. Unions um, have fought, fought pretty hard against any sort of cuts. You have seen um, cities across the country uh, initiate cuts for new hires for police officers. It's very hard to cut a pension that's already been given to an officer um, up to that point. So it's, it's very hard for cities and states to really make much of a, a dent in these pensions. And in terms of forfeiture for this kind of situation, like Derek Chauvin, for an officer convicted of a crime, uh, unions have fought any sort of effort um, at various state law um, legislations. They've fought those bills um, saying that they don't believe uh, it's fair, that these are earned benefits similar to, you know, uh, any other sort of salary or benefit given to an officer. And so they don't think that it's something that legally or um, they don't believe legally it can be taken away, but they also just don't believe it should be taken away. Do you see any significant change in the future uh, when it comes to these pension payouts? So I think you are starting to see some traction with, um, we looked at the number of laws that have been passed and we did find a number of laws that, uh, at the state level had been passed in the last 10 years. These laws all mm -hmm. affected all public employees, not just police officers. Uh, but what you've seen in the last few years is you are seeing more lawmakers willing to take on those police unions and try to pass uh, this kind of legislation. There was um, a lawmaker in Maryland who introduced this as part of a landmark reform bill um, that passed this year. The pension provision was taken out, um, so it did not make it into the final bill. But I do think you're going to continue to see these kind of um, legal or uh, legislative bat battles pick up again. Uh, I think as long as um, police reform and defund the police is something people are talking about, you'll probably see more mm -hmm. conversations around this issue. All right, CNN senior investigative writer Melanie Hicken, thanks for joining me.